Hey, everybody, welcome. We're going to give it about nice. another minute, and we'll get things rocking. Excellent. Awesome. Hey, see some familiar names, see some new names. Thanks, everybody, for coming. That's awesome. Um, yeah, the bus. The bus. I rode a bus Not as a kid. Super. I did, too. I, did too. I rode yeah. the bus. Bus was great. I lived out in the country, so we I, there was no other way. You had to ride the bus. Tractor? Kidding. That was yeah, a joke. You could have rode a tractor, I guess. <laughs> I'm joking. I just listened to a pod that we just did where we talk about our origin story. And it was it was actually I'm I told Jason I was like, I was very, very proud of it. It was very good. Um and uh so check that out, everybody. Hey, nonprofits raise more money. <laughs> Abra's been on that too. But uh no, and you're like you're like, I wanted to be a brain surgeon. Then I realized that I needed to go to school for 12 years. You're like, I grew up on a farm. I was like, why do you want to be a brain surgeon? He's like, because well, I, I just wanted to make a bunch of money. Yeah. <laughs> and then I realized I need to go to school for 12 years. So you're like, was, I thought that was hilarious. Yeah, I was, I was like, no, I, got, I don't have time for that. So That's so I agree funny. with you. Yeah. I wanted like, to be like a dolphin trainer at SeaWorld. And then I looked at the salary and I was like, I can't live on that. Yeah, I think exactly. you told us that before. For, I think for some reason I've seen it on one of your videos. Or, yeah, 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 exactly. That was my dream. That's awesome. Hey, you're going to Racine, Wisconsin here pretty soon. What, like next week or something? A couple of weeks? Two for weeks. The, is it, it, yeah, cool. Awesome. Awesome. I just remember, um, yeah, the prairie, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Fun. Okay, cool. Right. Hey, well, let's uh, let's yeah, get let's going. Get we, get off. I'll tell you what, let yeah. me open it up and then I'll let you introduce all. I want we'll episode 155. I'm just going to go and get yeah, some help. Yeah, it is 155. Holy yeah. cow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 155. Hey, nonprofits raise more money. Jason Ledlow, Trevor Nelson. Uh, I'll let him uh, introduce our guest. If this is your first time to be here, we really appreciate it. If you're a repeat uh, visitor, we're so glad to have you back. If you're watching uh, via recording or uh, via YouTube, we are so glad that you took the time. Please, we this is for free, but we do ask there is a fee that you would share this with other professionals in the nonprofit space that could benefit from this great information Aubrey is going to bring to us today. And uh, stay to the end and win. We're going to give away something that you can use to help raise more money for your nonprofit. So, uh, oh, any questions? questions you know down the Q&A chat we usually go through and ask about the weather and all that stuff but we're not going to do that today we're gonna we got Aubra we're ready to go and uh, yeah I kind of geek out whenever we have the the good fortune yeah. of an Abra on because we just start yeah. obviously we catch up we've known we've we've known you for a long time Abra and I'm just so grateful that you take the time and and I love we love I know the audience does too just from the feedback that we've had from other pods and you know you coming on the webinar before um Love it. Very um, to the point. You have a ton of experience um, and today is no different. So Abra Anis, thank you so much for coming. Everybody, thanks so much for tuning in. If you're watching this, you know, as a recording, thanks so much. If you're watching it live, we really appreciate you. Uh, and like Jason said, keep the questions coming because this is the kind of webinar that we run. Very interactive. We have an expert in the space here. So let's take full advantage of it. Uh, and ask a bunch of questions. Uh, and I'm just going to tell you, if you yeah. want to learn more, some stuff, Aubrey's got a lot of videos she put on YouTube, has yep. been for a long time. Yep. And if you put fundraising, she's like the number one on YouTube when it comes to this stuff. And so put that in there, you'll find a lot of really good info. So um, it's, it's, and they're good. They're actually, you can tolerate listening to them. So it's uh, <laughs> so good. So glad That's to have nice you here. Of you. That's nice of you to say. <laughs> well, no, I mean, there's just some, there's some, tolerable. there's, some, no, joking, there's no, some videos out there that you watch and it's just painful. Um, hopefully that's not ours, but, uh, yeah. they're, they're really painful to watch and sit through, but God, hers are really good. Cause she's uh, right to the point and gives a lot of good information. So no question. Right. I think that's why we've always gravitated towards your content and just having yeah. these conversations with you, Abra, cause I know you just don't, you just don't, you don't pull any punches. I think it's awesome. I know, you know, we know where your heart is, um, when it comes to raising money and then, um, yeah, you're just, uh, you know, you're a monster in the fundraising space. So once again, great to have you. you flatter me. You flatter yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, well, you earned so, it. But well, yeah. I, I want to tell let's you, talk so fund and need. let's talk about fund and need because <laughs> yeah. why don't you, Aubra, if you wouldn't mind, just give your definition of what fund and need is for somebody who's not for sure they're listening to it and they want to, you know, what that is. I'm going to make it as short as I possibly can. I love it. Uh, fund and need, which also goes by the name of paddle raise, live appeal, cash call, give to the heart. Uh, like it has a hundred different names, but mission it, mo moment, mission, mission moment, moment, all those things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What yeah. You want to call it all these uh, monikers? Yeah. It come. It comes with a lot of names. It is essentially the point in the uh, part of your event. Usually, I say evening because most of my events are in the evening. But in the part of your event where you ask for everyone in the room to just make a straight up donation gift to your organization. It's highly participatory. It should be exciting. And I, for my clients, I plan the entire event or we plan the entire event around these 
15 minutes, if you would yeah. say. And uh, I love a good live auction. A live auction engages like maybe 7% of your audience. Um, but remember in a live, there's always a winner and a loser. Um, and in the paddle raise, everyone's a winner. So okay. it is a very interactive participation moment. And most of my clients have made this the focus of their event, um, especially after COVID. Oh yeah. Good call. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned, you mentioned about, uh, you know, doing around the mission. So when we talk about the how to prep, whenever somebody says, okay, yeah, I want to do a fund of need. I want to do a mission moment. What give us your, um, maybe three, four five steps that you, you know, the things that you want to do, the things you don't want to do. Okay. Number one, you have to pick your, your mission. Um, sometimes this is something very tangible. Sometimes this is like, we need a new playground. We need new computers. We need whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes it's general funding. So I would say pick your path and define your, your mission, what you're looking to fund. Most of my clients tend to do the general funding. Uh, I think it's an easier ask. However, schools and sometimes smaller nonprofits tend to go the other direction. I don't think there's a right or wrong way, just a matter of preference. Um, so that's number one, define your ass. Number two, you have to work on your run of show to make sure that you don't have like what I call the fundraising bombs in the middle of your paddle raise or your fund to need. And that is to me, the fundraising bombs are uh, the mayor or the governor or some celebrity walks in, okay? Like that happens all the time. And then everyone gets up to shake their hand. That kills it. It could be two, uh, clearing of dishes. Three, it could be dropping of all the dishes. So we call the dropping the entree, the clearing of the plates. And uh, number four, the bomb would be post 9.30-ish PM. If you do it yeah. too late, your audience is too tired, too drunk, too bored, and it's just not good. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. You, have to, you have to avoid the bombs, avoid the bombs. That's number four. Work Number two, work on your program to define the bombs. Number three, which was probably the hardest and the easiest, is find somebody to do the ask for you. I am a professional who do this, does this. There's a lot of professionals out there, but I do not believe that what I do is rocket science. I think that if you cannot afford someone like me or you don't think it's necessary or your event's too small or if you're just trying it for the first year, if there is somebody in your board, there's a staff member, there's a local parent, like somebody who you can trust to deliver your mission and the call to action with real authenticity. Go ahead, go that route. You do not yeah. have to waste a ton. It's not I a waste, smart. Money, but you don't have to spend a ton of money to get results. And some of my favorite emails and phone calls are get I get are from like random people who are like, hey, we couldn't afford you, but I watched all your videos. I learned what to do. We had uh, so and so, our assistant director, do it, and and we raised a bunch of money, and that makes me so happy because just like you guys, I want everyone to raise money. That's my goal. I want everyone to win. Absolutely, yeah. everyone yeah. should win. And then fourth, which has a four and five and a six, is <laughs> you have to collect your data. Like you have to figure out how you're going to collect all the bid numbers, or if you're going to do it by mobile bidding, which is not my favorite, but I do it. Um, yeah. You have to figure out how you're going to store that information for the next year and also bill people. Like, how are we checking out? How are we following up afterwards to actually get the money? Because putting your paddle up doesn't always mean you get the money. And then last but not least, you have to cultivate, and you guys talk about this so much, you have to cultivate those relationships for the next year. Because otherwise, like, what are you doing? You're just hoping, throwing a party and hoping people show up and give you money. Like, you have to cultivate those relationships throughout the year so that someone who gave a hundred dollars gives 250 and someone who gave 250 give 500 so those are kind of like your four and a half steps that you would need i oh, love that i those love that so much hey let, let me let me just um, unpack one of those points that you made in, in no particular order you said mobile bidding so we're kind of getting the in, in in the weeds a little bit with actual you know doing the fun and need um and the mechanics of it you said it's not my preference what is your preference okay. as opposed to using mobile bidding software for a fun and need so I am very honest about who I am, what I can do, and what I cannot do. You sure and, are. And, and by the way, you're, whoever you hire to help you with this should tell you like the pros and the cons of how they work. So there's a couple things. Mobile bidding, if you're going to do a paddle raise, you can either do it one of two ways. 
actually there's a lot of different ways, but the two basic ways are through an app on a phone or in live some way. Okay, so if you're using your phone, you would need to A, purchase a technology, B, everyone would need to register, and C, at that moment of giving, everyone needs to get on their phone, tablet, whatever it is, and essentially press the button, have their credit card information already stored, so it's not like a headache, and the money usually typically shows up on the screen. That has two benefits that I do not. Number one, it is so fast. It's like two minutes, tax, yeah. maybe three yeah. minutes. And you can keep it open for a really long time. And if your program's really long or really short and you want to make your fundraising really short, go that direction. The other thing it does is you get the money instantly and you have all your data perfectly. Those are the two things I cannot compete with. Mm -hmm. However, what I do uh, is I will, I do things very, so I do things that mobile giving cannot do. Like mm -hmm. it takes a little bit longer and you have to get your own data. You have to collect it and enter it. But you get this, what I call like the three things that kind of like make a paddle raise a fund to need work. And that's you get energy, you get momentum, you get pressure, and it's an interactive piece that feels really good. And the reason why I don't do mobile giving is because I can't control what people do on their phones. Right. But I, and so I would tell you, don't spend your money on me because I, I don't know what's going to happen. You would spend the money on me and then we'd all just like hope and pray for the best. If you put me in the room, on the stage or on the floor, I know in the majority of situations, I can amp up the energy. I can get people motivated to give a little bit more. Or mm -hmm. if again, I can get, typically we can increase participation. And that is why I personally would not use like you wouldn't pair me with mobile giving like that we'd be paying for technology and me that's a waste don't do that yeah, I, so you can't well, have both. i want to clarify something because I yeah. think you can help that. you can but you can, i you, won't take that they're not job. mutually exclusive and i think what Aubrey's saying is cool. you what you what she's saying is you can use technology and Absolutely. her we want you in fact you need to use technology because you're going to capture all this data but what she's specifically saying is Instead of me looking down at my phone and yes. putting in something or flipping through an app, I'm, my eyes are going to be on her. Yes. yes. And then I'm going to raise my hand and hold my, my paddle up and say, because she says, you know what, for $5,000, we're going to be able to fund, you know, send five kids to camp. And I go, I'm right. in. And I raise yep. my hand. Yep. And that's what, that's what Aubrey's You do need do. technology. So, you are yeah, absolutely you correct. Technology. So you do, those but two you things not... are really... It's not giving on the phone bidding. Right. Right. I personally gotcha. did one where they were doing the phone stuff and they didn't yeah. have numbers and they did it. And I, per, I thought it was a train wreck. Uh, right. I mean, they raise money. Right. Don't misunderstand. Yeah. Sure. yeah. But at, you know, nine o'clock at night, yeah. everybody's kind of thinking about leaving. They've been yeah. having some cocktails. They're not thinking about looking up their phone. They're kind of listening. Then they got to go get their phone. They got to look down and, and it just takes an eyes off. So I just, that's, I don't, not my favorite way to do it, but I agree with you. There are times where you can do it. Yeah, let absolutely. Me, let me do a call, everybody. We just unpacked a lot, actually, in the la you know in the first what fifteen minutes. Any questions about the fund? I need. I'm on the fence. I didn't even know what this was. This, that, the other thing. Just get some get some questions going if they're yeah. top of mind. If you're just enthralled with the content right now in the conversation, this, you can stay put. And it can be really specific. Like <laughs> yeah, this let's get granular. Yeah. yeah. Why are you yeah. doing that? So, Abra, would you take on number one about picking your mission? Because I just made a comment about that. And I think that's really important for people because one sure. of the things that when we coach and we talk to somebody about is that they've got to attach the dollars. Now, I personally like to have one thing we're funding, if it's general funding all the way through from top to bottom and everybody knows what they're doing because they're still, you know, we say they're making an investment. So how do you walk through like in the general fund? How would you, like I said, send five, you know, five kids to camp. How would you walk walk a client through that process to be able to come up with an incremental giving dollar amount? Okay, so this is very specific to me, I would say. I don't know how many other people who do what I do could do this. Uh, so uh, take this with a grain of salt. It, okay, uh, this is a big question and like a really, really good question. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. so when you have project-based giving, um, it changes every year. One year it's technology, one year it's 21st century classroom furniture, one year it's we need a new van, it, it changes. And what I have seen in my experience is 
certain donors care about certain things and certain donors don't care about certain things. So you may have, for example, you may have a really high giving participation and dollar raised in your fund to need for, let's say, computers. And the next year you may pick something that may not be so sexy um, and your giving is not as high. And so I, I looked at a bunch of my clients and I have a fundraising background. I used to be a development director. And I said, why don't we just do unrestricted funding? And then you could buy computers and a van, but like, you don't need to promise anybody. And the example I always give, and you've heard this a hundred times is like, my grandma goes to these fundraisers. She'll raise her paddle to buy, like, send a kid to camp. And then she'll call you back five times and be like, which kid did I send to camp? And you're like, I can't deal with these headaches right now. It's too much right. like, things to do. Yeah, so yeah. here's how it works when you do general funding. When you do general funding, you have to, I do a ton of research. I am slightly anal in certain aspects of my house, but my background is blurred for a reason because I'm not anal about like putting things away. So, yeah, yeah. you know, <laughs> it's in our lives. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I do, I do a ton of research. So I need to know your organization inside and out. And then um, when we can, when we're on the phone and we do consulting, I will typically spend 30 to 45 minutes just talking about language because that's really big. When you do a general appeal pitch, it has to be about not just one thing you do. It has to be about kind of everything you do and mm -hmm. why it's why it's important. So I'll give a really simple example. Uh, I work, um, I have two cousins who have like severe um, disabilities. They live in homes and I go to Chicago and I do their auction every year. And that's where they live. And so this organization before working with me used to pick like one thing and their, their fundraising. I like data. I looked at it was kind of some years it was up, some years it was down, some years it was flat. It really was all over the place. When we changed to general funding, what happened was the audience attached their own passions to the to the call to action. So whether you had a two-year-old with a physical disability or a 25-year-old uh, with a mental disability, like intellectual disability, living in a home, we didn't have to divide the audience. Like, hey, this year we're focusing on uh, young adult education. And then I would sit back there thinking, gosh, what about my cousin? Like, he doesn't get any of that. I, I don't want dollars. I want my dollars to go to my cousin. So the call to action is more, and I'll give you an example. It's about we're, for them, it, they had a slogan, which was we're all in. So the call to action was, and it came right after the video, which is, you know, it has to like kind of dovetail in there. Sure. Um, tonight, we're asking you to go all in for this organization because of, and then I would list off like eight or nine things that we do. But the hope is that one of the things I listed made you remember how much you love the organization, how much you care about the organization, and also the reason why we needed more this year. Why do we need more? Why we have a waiting list. Okay, so that means we need more of not just some of it, we need more of all of it. And this was the first year where they'd ever tried it. And they went from raising like $60,000 to $170,000. And that's mm -hmm. a big change. Do I attribute all of it to general funding? No. But I do think that you don't divide your audience. And so for me, I like to go general funding because I think it oftentimes can pull in more donors. Yeah. And I've just talked for a long time and I'm going to. No, you're good. Well, it's interesting. No, I think though, that's too. really good because it's a great think, place to start. You know, yeah. what happens is, you know, when you're tying something to it, I think we ever, a lot of times I t when we talk to somebody, they start worrying about like restricted gifting and mm -hmm. things like that. And I always say, you got to just forget that. We're not, we're not talking about restricted gift unless like one year um, I was, this has been several years ago, I was doing an auction and they weren't doing a fund of need. And I'm talking to the headmaster, it was a friend of mine. And I said, hey, what do you need? Because it was like a last minute thing they asked me to do this auction. So yeah, I yeah. said, hey, what, what do you need? And he goes, what do you mean? I said, I don't know. You need something for that? He goes, we need Chromebooks. So while we're standing off stage waiting for them to finish, we did the math real quick and realized it cost $6,400 per classroom to do it. And I said, okay, we're going to start at first grade and go up. And he goes, yep, let's do that. And so we just said, we're going to do that for $6,400. And everybody knew what they were doing before the night was over. We'd raised you know, $75,000 over and above everything else they'd done. That was very specific. Right. But, and so, you know, 
be thoughtful about that because there may be something that you need. And, and to Aubrey's point, yeah, we 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 want to be an equal opportunity receiver. You want to take all comers, every every dollar that you can get in this opportunity because it's a rare opportunity to have all these people together. Yeah, that you've primed and you've prepped and you've done all this stuff not to be willing to take that. So. Really, no I think that's a wonderful example and illustration, Aubra, and I appreciate how you've answered that. It, um, it, hey, it, we've got a deal. One, Aubra, and I've got two questions. One, would yep. you be willing to, uh, do you have a script or some kind of basis of a script that you use that you could share? A script. Like, so, Amanda, I'm looking at your question, and my follow-up is, do you want a script for what I say, or do you want a script, meaning like a script for a run of show? Good question. Yeah. And the answer to the first one is for what I say is I wish um, because every time I do this, I get like Different. panicked and nervous that I don't know enough about the organization to get up there. I don't read a script. So I am very uh, like I have a You're theater. Prepared. You're prepared. I, I, I like practice this like a hundred times and it changes a little bit each time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, run a show, simple run a yeah. show. That's that's awesome. Yeah. That's yeah. from Lauren. Lauren said oh. script of show. Yeah, yeah, perfect. I'd also like to know that you're not scripted. Yes, I am not scripted when I do it, but mm -hmm. you have to really, A, trust your auctioneer or the person you're doing it mm -hmm. because I've watched people like lose the momentum and like start mm -hmm. talking about something that doesn't really matter. And you have to really, you have to speak the same language as the organization, which if you're doing it, Amanda, for your own organization, then you would get the language. But like, there's a lot of different words for giving. There's giving, there's philanthropy, there's pledge, there's gift, there's um, like, there's um, philanthropy. Like what words do you use with your donors? Because the biggest problem that I see is typically when I go to these things and I don't do them, the guy up there or the lady up there is just like, all right, let's raise some money. And, and you're like, Oh, okay. And it just kind of sounds a little off. Do I have a run of show to share? Absolutely. I have a run of show. I have like a hundred. I'll put together a, I'll put together my ideal run of show. But if you want to take some notes, here's my ideal run of show. You can do it one of two ways. Okay. Number one, which is my favorite, but no one ever wants to do it, which okay. is get everyone into a smaller room beforehand, sit them down theater style, like in rows of chairs, sign the seats, do a really quick, short and sweet program, 45 to 50 minutes tops. Let everyone go eat dinner, party, whatever. That's my preference. Uh, but you should know the uh, the funded needs like 15 minutes of that 45. So your mm -hmm. program is actually 30. Mm -hmm. My second choice is cocktail hour. Come in, eat your salads, uh, hear from the CEO or board chair, uh, clear salads, drop entrees, and the minute entrees are dropped, I want a video, a personal story, paddle raise first, fund to need first, and then live auction. So that's that that brings up something interesting. Um, that's my choice. Paddle raise first before the live auction is your preference. Yeah, well, for me, yes, it is. My you've preference. done it. You've done it both ways. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's your preference. Why? Well, uh, I used to do it, <laughs> I used to do it at the end of the night. And okay. Yep. Yep. All I did, and I would tell you it wouldn't work any other way. And then I had a, an organization who demanded I do it this way. And I was like, all right, I'll do it your way. I'll try it. Mm -hmm. Amazing. So yeah. why do I like doing it this way? Number one, the giving portion of the night always makes people a little anxious. It just does. Like people don't know what it's going to be. Is it going to be awkward? Is it going to be weird? Is it going to be like they hand me an envelope and a pencil? Or are they passing a microphone? Like it's always a little, has a little anxiety to it that's number one so i like to release that anxiety mm -hmm. number two i like to get people fresh um you know i have four kids at home i'm always thinking about oh my god is my babysitter gonna hate staying late is this gonna happen i you but know, that's getting... this is these are real concerns that we don't talk about enough i don't yeah think. you know that's the reality of it with these running with the run of show. Driving, i don't like driving at midnight anymore yeah you know, yeah exactly plus you know i there's like people drink they get drunk so i don't like it to be too late so that's yep. number two. Yep. Number three, I've never, ever once been on time with a program, whether it's five minutes, 10 minutes. Recently, I did one up in Palm Beach. It was an hour late. So if we had done the fund and need last, no, we wouldn't have had any giving. People would have been gone, bored, tired, whatever. So I like right. people. 
And additionally, as I mentioned earlier, the fund in need is every everyone in the room gets to participate equally mm -hmm. in the live auction. And I love a live auction. They are so fun. But it's only like 10 to 20 bidders, no matter the size of your room, whether it's like 200 people or 2,000 people, it's always 20 bidders. So right. it's the same people bidding and half that number went, right? Like you could have 20 people bidding, but only like four people went. So only four people get an opportunity to give. Plus, you're having a fundraiser. If you do not actively ask for donations at your fundraiser, you are spending so much money on the room, on the decor, on the AV, on the dinner, on, and then not to add up all your staff time. Right. Like if I am convinced that most of my organizations, if they looked at everything they spent, including staff salary time, they would be in the red. And shocked. so yeah. I think you have to ask. Yeah. And the asking really inspires other people to get more involved. And then I will end with this. I always end my fund and needs with a non-monetary ask, always. Because if you don't have the capacity to ask, if you're staff, if you already gave before, if you're a sponsor, whatever it might be, I want you to have the opportunity to raise your paddle. So it could be something as simple as take a picture of your table and post it on your social media right now and tag us. Or it could be text three friends and tell them what an amazing time you're having right now at our event. Or it could be something as simple as who could help us volunteer next year? Who can dedicate two volunteer hours? So it could be something super simple, but the paddle raise, in my opinion, the fund and need has to have like monetary components and non-monetary components. So I, that I, is I've why- I've never I, heard anyone I, say I like that, that a lot. I've hey, never heard anyone say that. It's so good. I hey, love Barbara, that. I, I want to ask on a question that uh, Lauren had posted and she was talking about, um, uh, how do you decide your highest ask? It's a great question. And I think let's just, she had two questions. Let's break it that one first. This is something that everybody always str struggles with. And mm -hmm. I want to get your take on it because I have a different take than most, a lot of people, but I want to get your take on, on the highest ask and denomination. Okay. If you're doing this for the first time, I would say pull up your database of giving and donors and see kind of like where, what, what is a major gift for you? If a major gift for you is like 25 to 50 or 50 to 100, you are going to want to start probably around 10 because you're going to get the 50 to 100 plus the 10. The gift at the event is a secondary gift. It is not a either or most of the time. And that needs to be like really clear. Um, most of the time with my clients, they've been doing this for a while and they bring me in because they would like to bump up or change something. And so I go to the data and I see what you did. And I take an average spend for every person in the room. I see where that is. And then I look at the average gift size and where the levels were for the past few years. And I move those around recently, recently I have been. If it feels right, which is so hard to discuss over anything because no right. one even understands what I'm talking about, I have been asking for one level over I'm supposed to start. But typically, I know I always have one paddle ready to go yeah. in the room at the highest level. And I do fund needs that start at $1,000 and go all the way down to $25. And I do some that start at $100,000 and go all the way to 1000 Mm -hmm. I think my biggest fund to need gift was 500,000, but I, I think just, I want to, I awesome. want to just keep, I want to kind of expound on that because what you're saying is, cause a lot of times they're in there I'm, and I'm not here to do either, or I've always been the deal. I just kind of determined what I was going to do. I'd say how much money do we, I, I would know where that gift was and the money was, but I would just always, like you said, it's a feel when you've done this for a long time, and you're a professional like Abra. Abra knows probably that you're going to bid before you do. She knows you're going when you're going to raise your hand just because those, I don't even know how to identify it, describe it, but you just kind of know. And I, I know that Trevor wants to give. I know he's going to raise his hand and here he does. And he does, raises his hand and it's $10,000. So my point is, I think a lot of times everybody has a fear of if Trevor not hearing you, buddy. No, he is. No, I'm good. Oh, okay. Good. 
Yep. Sorry. Uh, so I, I guess where I'm going with this is don't be afraid to ask. I think mm-hmm. that you've got to be willing to, willing to experience, Put yourself out there. If you've got a professional, they need to be willing to put themselves out there a little bit. Now, absolutely, you want to do your homework. You want to know. And if you go into it blind, a lot of times you're you're going to run into some walls. And well, you uh, want to be prepared. Have some wrecks, yeah, yeah. yeah. And but, the other thing that I've been doing lately, and you're you can have your whoever's doing it say is sometimes I know we have a gift for most of the time we start between five and ten. It's either mm-hmm. five, 75, or 10. That's kind of my sweet spot. And then we go down to 25, 1,000, 500, 250, 100, and typically we stop there. What I've been trying recently, because I'm always like trying to figure out new things. It's you know, yeah. my it's hobby, my geek mm-hmm. out, whatever you want to call yeah. it. Yeah. Is, I, is I won't say, like, let's say I know I have a 5,000. Somebody will say, or another auctioneer would say, who would like to start us off with 7,500? I have been saying, who would like to start us off with a gift of greater than 5,000, which leaves a lot of wiggle room. However, sure. the downside uh, is, the downside is- They might not is, say 7,500. They might not say 7,500. Well, yeah. it's awkward because then they yeah. raise the cattle and now I have to walk up and be like, all right, so this is weird. Uh, how much are you giving? <laughs> right. And I've asked them in front of like 500 people. So sometimes they say 10,000. Sometimes they say 5,500. Um, and so it's kind of, it's kind of all over the board, but you should know, yeah. like, I'm a big proponent of, you should know, like the good thing that's going to happen. Like yeah. most of the time someone says 10,000, mm-hmm. but uh, every once in a while, somebody goes 5,500 and I'm like, yeah. so good. I got that 500. was my, that was my follow-up question. Aubrey. So you're finding that you would start at 75, for instance, now you're saying above and beyond five and you're letting the room dictate that or the individual, Correct. the donor. And most of the time they're settling around 10 because it's a digestible round number. Okay, let me ask this question. Yes, but, but yes, we'll yes. say most of my clients are $100,000 plus fundraisers. So they have $10,000 gifts in the room. So but we're, talking, we're just talking numbers. Yeah, absolutely. Because someone that. could say, you know, at a, at, a, at, a, at a different room, they could say who's willing to give at the $2,500 or above level. Right. Well, so no, you want to make instance. it a separate, you want to make it a separate level, in my opinion. I okay. think this has to be a separate ask because I oh, no, I meant plan. I meant just for I, I'm I'm tracking you 100. I meant just for a smaller room that could just be a number that you start okay. with as opposed well, to your but but the but the words what she's saying is yeah the let's words get into that matter okay the yeah okay the words do matter. Yeah. this is real yeah specific. yeah good so, yes yeah, say that so I always want an out plan like mm-hmm. if no one answers my ask and I'm asking for does anyone who want to give a we'll pretend it's a thousand dollars is our top level giving. Mm-hmm. What I will typically say is tonight I'm supposed to start at one thousand okay. dollars, but I wanted to ask if anyone in the room would be willing to give a gift greater than one thousand mm-hmm. dollars. And then if it's a yes, yay. But if it's a no, I want to be like, okay, I asked, great, let's start. And yeah. so I want like, I want my out. Like I'm always looking for my out to and make it seem seamless. Like I didn't totally blow the whole fund to need by asking for too much money, I, you know, like yeah. I'm sure Jason's yeah. been in that situation where no one raises and you're like, okay, here we go. No one's giving. Woo. Yeah. 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 No. Yeah. You don't want that. Yeah. Right? Well, and all of a sudden you hear crickets. <laughs> yes. You don't, you hear- in fact, in fact, you're hoping you see your crickets because it's, yeah, so, it's so, yeah, you can yeah, hear a pin drop. Not, it's not a right, fun. Right. So you want to have Oh, it. and then I will give everyone else my biggest tip. Yeah. People love this tip. I come from an entertainment background before I got into fundraising. If I know I have a pre- a pre-planned gift. Like I know there's a gift at $5,000 in the room and I know they're going to raise. I instruct them. I meet them before the event starts, like during cocktail hour. And I say, don't eager beaver me. Mm -hmm. Sit on your paddle, count to 10 in your head and wait to raise your paddle because I want one of two things to happen. Number one, it's super duper duper awkward. And most people start to like sweat and look anxious. I like mm-hmm. awkward. Awkward awkward's my middle name. No problem with waiting for money. And then when that like awkwardness is, the tension is broken, it's like electric. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Or number two, what happens is someone can't deal with the tension and they raise their paddle. And now we have two $10,000 gifts or 5,000, whatever I said, for example. Sure. And so that is one of my biggest, like it's, this is the minutia I work on with my clients. It'll be in the script. Tell bidder 152, count to 10 slowly in their head before mm-hmm. raising their paddle at our top level, whatever it is. 
Yeah. Um, so yeah. Well, That's you've broken it down to you've broken it down to a science. You're a scientist. <laughs> you're... I well, try. You know, you know? Every, everything that she's saying is so on point because so totally. You're you're as per you usual. Somebody as in per control. Usual. They don't really know what's going to happen. They don't know how things are going to go. Everybody's a little anxious to see what's going to happen. You know, I, I was at uh, an event and I watched a guy and and he start, he was asking for fifty thousand dollars and he didn't have it. He didn't have somebody going to gift, but he had somebody who was extremely wealthy really thought a lot of the, the organization and he had been tipped off that he said, I think this, I think, I think she'll do it. Yeah. Well, she did. She, I mean, and it went on the tensions building and all of a sudden she raised her hand and the whole room went bananas. Mm -hmm. Absolutely bananas. What's well, timing, yeah. man. And the best I, thing I mean, was yeah. is she stood up and pointed at her ex-husband and said, you need to give 50,000 too. Cause he was sitting on the other side <laughs> of the stage and that was an awesome deal. But um, he's like, I thought we just did, but you know, <laughs> if they had sure. waited on to see what, and they had capacity in the room, they knew that, yeah. you know, these were significant uh, donors, but we've got more That's questions fine. and I really want to get those. Um, let, so me, let me, let me interrupt really quick, yeah. Jay. If there's anything that we don't get to, or we can't answer, you know, right away or something like that, or you want follow up, Abra, we're going to put your email with the recording tomorrow when this goes yeah. out. Okay. Yeah, so we're going to give folks access to you. Um, right. if you're okay with that, and of course, before we wrap, we want to tell everybody how they can find you and your YouTube mm -hmm. channel and all that good stuff. So I hope that helps her. Like Jason said, the onset, her YouTube channel, you've been doing it and working on it fastidiously for many years now. And it's an encyclopedia of information. So yeah. Um, really, good really stuff. Good. Sorry for interrupting. Okay. Yep. All right. So if you're doing a, if you're not doing a seated dinner, do you think this still works? All right. Yes. Okay. Uh, well, I would ask yes. the question would be, is this a stand up event? Just like a cocktail hour event or you're not, it's the program is seated, but you're just not serving dinner. Mm -hmm. I will answer my own question because I think it's the program is seated, but you're not serving dinner. I do not think that food is mandatory at these things. I think it's highly overrated and it's not that good. Like I never Agreed. eat at these things anymore. I go to Agreed. make a meal on the way home. And I think everyone in the room would rather have like a Big Mac than a piece of rubber chicken personally, but I like McDonald's. So I think that it, you can structure your event so you don't have to serve dinner, number one. You I can agree. make it a little bit earlier and end at like six o'clock and let people go to dinner. You could do it from like 7.30 to like 11 and, you know, just have it be desserts. I love that. It's also but different. The, yeah. the dinner, the seated dinner creates two problems for me, actually three. Problem number one is we have to, everyone always needs to serve a salad drives me insane. I would like a one course meal because the clearing and the dropping takes 25 to 30 minutes minimum. And it's noisy and it's loud and it's a mess. Oh, so that's oh. obstacle number one. Yep. Obstacle number two, half the room has their back to me. Big problem for me. I don't like that. Like half the people are sitting like, like this, not fun. And then problem number three is it just takes up so much physical space. You have a 72 inch round with 12 chairs around plus walking space. So now if you want to have a hundred people, the room has to be so big and sometimes intimate is better. So I do not think that you need to do a seated dinner at all. Um, I've seen food trucks. I've seen grazing stations. I've seen like, uh, like a dinner in a box being served to you. Like, I do not think you need a sir, a plated seated dinner personally. Um, and you can do a Fun to need anytime. I've done them at breakfast. I've done them at lunch. I do them at dinner. Mm -hmm. I've done them at like random hours. It doesn't really yeah. matter. What matters yeah. is you tell your story, hit your mission moment, and you ask yeah. properly. Yeah. Yeah. 100. I've seen it done at like concerts, showings, like yeah. previews, stuff like that, where, you know, yeah, folks are standing, things like things of that nature. Um, you know, outdoor festival type settings, you know, things yeah. like that, where they've had a silent auction and the fun to need and stuff like that. And I've witnessed all of that. I think it's, uh, I think it's good. Uh, Jay, you got more questions. I don't have access. Well, I've got a follow-up on this. I think they gave a follow-up. They said it was a casino night standing. Oh, fun. And I'm going to just tell you, I, I personally hate casino nights. That's okay. I That's besides them. the point though. It's not, yeah, come on I hate now. Them. But Let's here's what all... you can do. <laughs> you can still here's do a fund to need. Yeah, Before yeah. you open the casino, do all your fundraising because you'll you never go. get them back. That's you super will... smart. It's so hard to get them back from there uh, once they do that. So I just wanted to point that and out. And then have raffles. Have you raffles. You can do it with a casino. Night, in the... It's just your run of show has to be set up for the funding. So let's get to another one. Um, should you use a match for a fund to need? If you have one, 
and you think it will help and you've looked at the data. So I use matches very differently than most people. Most people will say, we have a $10,000 match tonight. Uh, please give a lot. And um, Okay, sure. I use matches at strategic levels only to move donors along. And so typically the typical place I use a match is either at 500, because we're trying to move all those $250 donors up to 500, or at $1,000. Occasionally we will create a level in between like 750. So the jump is not so great from 500 to 1,000. Um, I like a match. I think the match has to be done well. But matches can also be used in a lot of different ways. So recently I did a school right here in Miami. I'm not in Miami, but they are. And um, they had a problem that one of the other people have, which is they can't get their audience to start talking. And they only had one person give last year. Okay. So to me, this is like, warning, warning, this is yeah. going to not work. So yeah. what we did is we took the match. They had $100,000 and we made some fun graphics and we put the hundred thousand dollars in like a locked box, like a treasure chest or some, whatever, safe, a safe. And the only way to unlock the money was through participation. They wanted to get a hundred donors. Mm -hmm. So you can use that match in a lot of different ways. I've also seen matched use for how many, we need like 25 new donors to unlock this money. We're we're going to match all the increased giving. So if you gave $100 last year and you give $250 this year, we're going to match right. that $150. Yep. I think you really have to dig into your data, talk to your donor, and see what they care about. Do they care about everyone giving? Do they care just about dollars? Do they care about new gifts? Sometimes it's for like people under 40, right? This match is only for young people under 40. I don't new qualify donors. it. Yeah, yeah. Whatever. Right. But like you can use them in a lot of different ways. And I hope that answers I love, your question. I love the I creativity think, uh, yeah, I think that was a great right no, way to put good. it. I, I just yeah. think. Don't get caught up in one thing. And if you're going to ask for a match, because um, I think that kind of goes with this, if you don't mind, I, I was just going to say what I've always recommended somebody to say is to go say, hey, Trevor, you know, we're going to have a fund of need. We're going to try to raise $100,000. We're looking, we're asking, would you be willing to make a gift that we can help leverage to get other people to participate? Mm -hmm. And, you know, if Trevor's already a donor, already cares, he's doing it, he's like, yeah, sure. We've had people, you know, gave one person gave 50, another one gave 25. We broke it all up because that's all there was, was the fund of need. There wasn't a live auction or anything else. Yeah. Gamified the whole thing. It, like Aubrey said, there's so many ways you can do it. So you really just have to take, you know, what is it that you have? I would yep. say um, yeah, I love that. versus going love and that. saying, oh, yeah, well, we're going to do it this way because we've always done it this way. Boy, that's a good way to run into some. Uh, Boy. Some yeah, Both if you're running into people that say we've always done it this way, this way we're gonna do it. Um, that's you, like you said, that's that's a warning signal as well, right? Yeah, that's not, yeah. Hey, that's I want to hop down to Tracy's. Creativity. Yeah, uh, I want to hop down to Tracy's because this is something that I I, I really want to hear uh, Avra do because uh, it's a real it can be a real issue. And uh, and what she said was, what's the best way to get the audience to stop talking and listen to you? We struggle with getting audiences to pay our audience to pay attention. We've heard this one before. This is good. Yeah, yeah. I want to hear your feedback, Avra. Well, Tracy, if you could pop in the chat and just let me know what kind of type of organization you are, my guess it's a school. That's my guess. Um, and this is very, very common. Okay, here are your options. Number one, only serve wine and beer and stop serving hard alcohol. That's probably Fair. the easiest. Number two, close down the bars during the program. You will have people hate you, but it works. Number three, do it theater style. So the sitting at a table really right. gets a conversation going and people typically can't hear and the room is big. So if you do it, Oh, it's a children's museum. Yeah. Young, high I love children's museums. I go to like at least 30 a year nice. with my kids. Nice. Um, and you, so you could do it theater style, which mm -hmm. means like people are really used to that, or you could do it like in a movie theater or, or somewhere where there's a built-in uh, theater style seating. Mm-hmm. Um, and then last but not least, and this only works sometimes, and look, I'm a big old patriot. I love this country. Start with the Pledge of Allegiance and the Star Stangled Banner, and you people will shut up. Those are really good. Didn't think of that. Holy the last smokes. thing, I, I want to put one more thing in there. That's in our DNA to Don't shut up. Don't be a thing. You, <laughs> so when you so get good. your sound system, your audio set up, realize that if you go to a basketball game, you go to an NFL game, you go to any kind of sporting event, 
Everybody's yelling, screaming, cheering. They can still hear the audio. So make sure that you don't wind up trying to use the house audio that nobody's going to hear off anyway. And yeah. I mean, you want to get their attention, but sometimes having enough volume helps. Totally. Great point. Oh, or I'll give you a bit. <laughs> oh, it's like a shy person on stage. People like the, those people who are like, I'm so nervous. And they talk yeah. like this. Everyone shuts up for them too. Oh, that is okay, good. Cool. That's but really cool. I will tell you. Great questions, Tracy, by the way. Thank you. I will tell you, Tracy, though, that the symptom is um, caused by something bigger, which is typically that these people come to this for the wrong reasons. And yeah. I see a lot of this. Like they're there to party. They're there for the social scene. And Eater, they will spend Eaters, not givers. Yeah. yeah. They're like wearing an $800 dress and a new bag and new shoes. And they're there to hang out with their friends and not because of the philanthropy. So you can listen to an old episode, I think, where I talked about the JV versus the varsity invite list. Yes. That yes. will dramatically cut down your talk. Really, really you can only, really you can only apply it to next year. Yeah, that's totally. a that's a really good. Um, we'll try to put that, find the link of that, and put it in the email when we send it out. We I know which one it is. So I we'll like put, the we'll fundraising idea first, where you said if you had your rather's, you know, you would do it where it's like let's just do it now, and then we'll do the dinner and the cocktail and the networking yeah. and all after. I love that. I think it's great, and I actually think raise money would, first, party oh, later. I think people would respond to that, Abra. Yeah, I mean. Um, Really I want to good. just make sure that we answered. I, we try to hit on that. Uh, how do you um, ask? Someone had a question. The, I think Jacob did, if memory serves, about those four rules. Uh, the I four typed steps. it out to him. I typed it to him. Oh, yeah, you I typed said, it? Okay, I great. I was going to say, yeah. we should probably just embed that in the show yeah. notes yeah, yeah, with the recording. That. If we can mm -hmm. add that, we will. Um, so I hope, and circle back with us, Jacob, if, if, if yeah. And Jason, uh, there's also a question. Jason spelled because, anything wrong. No, I'm joking. There's a yeah. question in the chat. Yes, okay. I see Talk about this. And I was going to come back and say, because there's quite a bit. Um, if you've never done a fundraiser, uh, what's established a good basic giving and what's a minimum number of people needed to have a good fundraiser? I'm going to go a little rogue here. I'm known for this. <laughs> I don't know if you have if you have managed to get this far and you can get funding without doing a fundraising event. I'm not sure I would advise you to get on the train for a lot yeah. of reasons. They yeah. take a ton of time. Like the amount of time they take they're is expensive. and they're so expensive and they're like ongoing in perpetuity. Once you have one, you, they're like the train that doesn't stop. You can it's very hard to get off the train. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Yeah. I would rather have you do something like a big silent auction that you, you know, you can load up, you can push out to all your donors, but yeah. doing an event is not always uh, the best the way to raise money. However, to answer your question, if you want to do this for the first time, you need to start small. Have this. This is like real old school, like from the 50s. They used to have these things called like parlor meetings. See if you can get 25 people into somebody's living room. See if you mm -hmm. can attract those people. And typically what happens is you ask one of your existing donors to host. That means they pay for the food and the drinks. Just yeah. make it very clear. Because they like hosting. Maybe you yeah, find the right the people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can see if you can get 25 people to show up. I think it's really hard when people, when organizations are like, well, let's have a fundraiser and they sell 50 tickets. Well, of course, it's your first year. Like that makes sense to me, but you're not going to sell 250 tickets your first year, unless you're yeah. huge, which maybe yeah. you are. But I would start small. I do a parlor meeting. If the parlor meeting works well, do another one. See if you can get 25 other people. Awesome. And once you have a base of like 50, Maybe now each one of those 50 people could invite one more person and you'd been at, be at 100. I think to raise money, it's not so much about the numbers because that was like a secondary question. Like, yeah, how many people, how many people do we need? Yeah. This goes back to like- It's quality over quantity though. Well, yeah. Yeah. I'd rather and, have you have fewer people who have higher capacity and really like your organization yeah. than 500 people in the room who are drinking and partying their faces off and don't care what you do. Totally. You know, and sometimes that's what still... folks what folks want to focus on, unfortunately. They want the 500 person giant event that's super, super, sorry for cutting you off, Jay, super, yeah. super costly and not everyone's giving. You know what right. I mean? Well, yeah. there's, a, there's a saying and somebody, I had uh, one of the guys here that works here, he, we had lunch the other day and it said, expansion is vanity, profit is sanity. And mm. I think that goes into what Aubrey's wow. saying is you know, sometimes we think we've got to go have a big event. I can tell you, if you haven't had a big event and you don't know who you don't know who your good donors are, what make yeah. I mean, and I mean this very respectfully. Pick up the phone. 
Yeah. Do not try to think. A, a, an event is not a way to raise money, especially if you're trying to get things started. Sure. Agreed. And I want to go yeah. to back to Tracy for a quick second, because Tracy, yeah. I just Googled you real quick and yeah. I found out where you are. Um, yeah. This problem is very common in your location and in your area. So this is not oh, wow. just your event. I do events in your area and they all suffer from this problem. Disclose the area if you don't mind, can you? Yeah, it's Houston, Texas. Got it. Cool. But they give a lot of money. They There's have a huge donor class. They want to give. So I would do a couple yeah. different things. I would bump up every single price in your silent by like, I would start at 75% of value instead of like 35% of value. Like I would Good. start high, like artificially inflate your bidding. Good. Um, and I would, this is hard because in Texas, it's just like Miami. It's very similar. Like they love to dress. They love to show up. They love to chit chat. Mm -hmm. They love to network. Mm -hmm. It's very similar. Mm -hmm. Um, I would try theater style and then throw them a big old party, sit them down for 40 minutes and then let them go drink their faces off yeah. and dance the night. Away. Um, That's thanks for the feedback. And also Tracy, once again, we've already mentioned this, we're putting your business in the street, Abra. We're going to give folks access to you and the ability to reach out to you directly. If you need Wait. to unpack. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> That's hey, what I like to do. HGA fans. They're, 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 they're awesome. They're raving fans and they're going to enjoy spending time with you. So we're going to, we're going to give your information out with the recording and all that good stuff. And once again, at the end, I want to, I want you to tell folks where they can find you easiest. Um, I wanted to follow up with that as well. Uh, a gentleman that is on our team, um, Matt Ashley, who used to work for, uh, for Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation um, before he joined our, we've, we had the good fortune of having him come on our team, um, was, would talk about the success that he'd have with very, very exclusive, he called them sponsor events where it was just, and it, you were talking about grabbing 25 people and 25 people and maybe creating this hundred person event. It was true, true, diehard sponsors with high capacity, high net worth. And it was like a recognition dinner almost, yeah. but a very exclusive, he called them sponsorship, sponsor events, where they it was only this donor class got invited and they turned it into a fundraiser and ended up being one of those one of the most profitable events that he would have on an annual basis. It was really nice recognition. It was it was very focused. It was very, and, and for good reason, you know, very myopically focused on those people um, and a great way to, once again, uh, if you're just starting out, fantastic. But think about like what Abra said about getting very, very detailed about who these people are. And I love your steps. Start with 25, start with another 25. They all bring somebody. Now you got a hundred. You know? Go ahead. Go ahead, Go ahead, Abra. Please. No, I was going to say the other piece that most nonprofits that I talk to who mm -hmm. just call me up and they're like, we love you from YouTube. We'd love to hire you, but we can't, <laughs> it's, we don't have enough people to come to our event or, and yeah. I'm like, I wouldn't, we couldn't do it anyways. Finding donors is hard. And I would yeah. just say this, it's gonna be 20 seconds. Don't be afraid to buy a list. There's, and I don't work yeah. for any of these companies. Don't be afraid to buy a donor list for the donors in your area who are interested in the organization that you have. Just nice. play the game. Everyone buys a list, buy a list. Well, you're still a business. You can treat your organization like a business. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I'd follow up on that. And the most powerful, it's, it's not what you know, it's who you know. And how and will you know them? The most powerful yeah. fundraising tool is right here. We all have yeah. one. And you've probably got a group of people that you're working with. And that's who you start with is who do you know? Um, love you that. Know, a people exercise. Who do we know? Yeah, uh, I love that. You know, she talked about doing the parlor, doing doing having the, the parlor gathering. Um, there's a foundation right here where I live. They started off... Um, exactly that way 25 mm -hmm. i think it was almost 25 exactly showed up in a house raised about thirty thousand dollars found out that they had some people that really cared about the mission and then grew it from there and now they're having you know they have 300 people show up at uh and raise a whole lot of money at their event but they started very very small very um conservative and thoughtfully where they weren't spending a lot of money because mm -hmm. you can spend a whole lot of money really fast in this in, in the event game. No joke. And, yeah. And, uh, yeah. So, Be purposeful. You know, and, and Ken, if you would like to, uh, I, I'd invite you to sign up for a coaching session. It's free and we can yeah. spend an hour, go through all this stuff, talk about it. Talk Love about that. Your specific and you can also do that with Abra too. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. We'll, 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 and you can reach out to Abra. Hey, we're hey gonna, Bev had a question. We gotta, we gotta ask, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta give something away. Some I want to get, I want to be polite to Bev because yeah, she is, you're such she a is sweetheart, our, Bev, because you're always here, always here and we can't thank you enough, by the way, for always coming and always having great, great input. Uh, Bev had a question about the sponsor events. Absolutely. Bev, I can put you in contact with Matt from our team so he can tell you exactly how he did it, but I want you to treat it like, no, you're not asking for money twice. Completely separate. These are true believers. Um, and so don't have any fear or trepidation is going to be my answer about um, a sponsor event and 
uh, above and beyond what you know what they do in other aspects and, and things of that nature because no it's exclusive and it, it's a, there's a really cool way very creative way unique way that you can go about structuring an event like that and i'll put you in contact with matt so you can spend a half hour with him if you like so I want no to give you. I want to give you guys some thoughts on that one point, and I want to see what Aubrey's take on it is. Oh, so I had a really big question. Several, we had to get several to. years ago, we had. Um, so several years ago, I got asked to do an do an auction, very last minute thing, like two weeks before. Go there, met with them, went and did the event, and um, it was very very small. And I get there, and I asked the executive director. I said, "Who's your biggest fan? Who here in this room is your biggest fan?" She goes, "What do you mean?" I said, "Who's giving you the most money?" Miss Johnston. She goes, why? I said, because I'm going to go ask her for some money. She said, oh, well, I don't know. You know, she just got through back from Hawaii, and then she had a wedding in Belize and all that stuff. I said, I'm going to ask her for more then. So I knew she had capacity. <laughs> and so I went and talked to her, introduced myself, and I said, hey, look, this is kind of their first event to do this. I said, would you be willing to uh, make a gift we could get things started with? And she goes, of course I will. Yeah. Of course I will. Yes. That is what you're going to find. Your highest donors, the people that have invested the most, are the they are the they're your biggest fans and they yes. want you to succeed. Uh, so other times, Jay, there's an illustration that we've shared before where they're going to be offended if you don't ask. Uh, they're okay. Borderline ticked off. You there know was what I mean? a, uh, we don't a have ton, we don't have a ton of time. Was say was talking to one of the uh, one of the donors, um, one of the board. He's on the board. The guy's got z a lot of money, and he told her when she, he found out, he got really upset and he said, "Don't ever let money be a reason." that one of these kids can't go to camp. Yeah. Don't ever let that happen. And cause he's like, I got money. I can fix that. Uh, we, that's we the thing. These money, people, so. you know, sometimes we think with our own checkbooks and that's a to Hey, guess what? Total, totally common. We yeah. do the same things, Well, we're talking about different levels here. Right. And these are folks that are true believers in what you're doing. They're fans, they're investors. You know what I mean? In your organization. And they want to be apprised of these things. They want to be, they want to participate more often than not, I think is the overall point. Jay, I have one question for Abra. I'm so sorry. Mm -hmm. This used to be the, what, while you pull up a winner. You I've pull got up the winner. winner. I'm ready to go. Oh, far out. So we'll figure out, we'll figure out how much they're going to win here in a second. We have our own bank, uh, Abra. We give away HGA bucks now. It's not a real bank. It's the HGA. Ooh, fun. Uh, so anyway, that's what we do now at the end. But, um, okay. It's not the elephant in the room anymore because I kind of already know what the answer is, but there was this, there was a trend going along for a long time, um, in the space that said, Hey, the fund and need is going to, you, you don't need a live auction. You don't need a silent auction anymore because you're going to do a fund and need and blah, blah, blah. And oh, and if you do a live auction, that's going to pull money from your fund and need. Does it? Are we talking about two different budgets? Can you have can you have your cake and eat it too? Long story short. You have your cake and eat it too. Mostly, yeah. most of my clients, the organizations I work with, decide on cutting one of those three and it's typically the live, but they just move everything from the live into the silent on the phone because we're seeing things sell for similar prices and it doesn't take a, so much time in your program. Great call. Great you call. should have, you should have, you should have at least two. I mean, I like the silent. It's so easy. People They're revenue it. streams. I mean, it's, why would you throw away a revenue stream? It doesn't make so any easy. sense. It's so easy. Yeah. Um, and I do lives. I definitely do lives. I do. Yeah. I, I do like small lives. I do like three items or something, but definitely well, have your cake and eat it too. Typically the people who bid donate and bid and bid well. Yeah. They're not ex mutually exclusive. So yeah. keep well, whatever. With that, with that answer, you just invited yourself onto another episode of the podcast. So yeah. I love coming that. on the podcast. Yeah. So, <laughs> okay. All right. I'm going to do this. Kimberly hey. Martin. Kimberly Martin, you are our winner. You right on, Kimberly. Uh, cool. How much did she win? Man? Come on. And How much so did reach she up win? there and touch the screen. Yeah, those, those, aren't our, those aren't our colors, but I'll, it's okay. We'll work with it. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much for coming, Kimberly. Thanks everybody for coming. It's awesome, Aubrey. We could talk. All right, hours. congratulations. Nice, Kimberly. Two hundred dollars and eight bucks. bucks. You can use it for any item for your fund fundraiser. Congratulations. Yep. yep, you can use that, and we'll have someone from our team can really reach out to you with that and how you can use it in the future. No pressure, whenever you want, and that's awesome, Aubrey. Wow, that's all I gotta say. Every time we do this, I go wow. Yeah. uh amazing we're gonna do it again like i said you've already invited yourself on no pressure onto the podcast and uh I'll, we'll be in, we'll be in touch and we'll do it yeah. so good yeah. so always good. it's always a pleasure abra just such, so much information guys go look her up uh, oh yeah abra look her up best on place YouTube. to find you on youtube probably and, um, you can find me on youtube you can search abra auctioneer you can look up generosity auctions i got a website i got a blog you can yeah. find me 
Cool, I don't cool. post on Instagram anymore, though. It, not that's my fair. Point. That's fair. That's better. Better. Your your time's better served somewhere else. Doing yeah. stuff like this. Holy smokes. Yeah. So good. Oh my god. Thank you All so right, much, everybody. Robert. Thank you guys so much. Thanks, we'll see everyone. You back here next yeah. week. Bye, everybody. See you for one fifty six next Thursday. Take care. Have a great Thursday. Bye.